Hello everyone, and welcome to part 8 of how to make a point-and-shoot game of, in Unity. The last time, we created our timer, and we got started with making our block, or selecting a block, and getting it in position to do something. Now we have to make it so it moves around the screen how we want it to. So right here, I have the code used to warp the object to a position below the grass and then throw it in the air. And I just want to move this grass down to make sure it's doing what we want it to. Okay. So, so it has a problem where it collided with the mountain. If I were to move all the colliders away and click play, as you can see it moves up, but not back down. And that's because I got rid of the gravity. I'll just return it. So now we're focusing on a problem where Unity doesn't know which collider should be active and which shouldn't. Because ideally, our object here will just warp to under the grass and jump out from wherever we put it. The way we're going to fix that is by setting our box collider to is trigger. Now it doesn't really care about those other colliders, but it also doesn't care about gravity either. Oh, and that's because I had the gravity scale set to zero. So now it goes to the right position and jumps out. Just going to give it a bit more force upward. Now it'll fire itself out of the grass and I shoot it. So now I'm going to just move this sprite to the side and create another one. I just copy and paste, change its color, uh, let's make this one orange and make sure it's named block 2. So I'm gonna have these blocks jump from one end of the mountain to the other. So I'll just figure out the Z, I believe it had to be like Z equals, okay what was Z? Oh, I'm moving the wrong thing. I believe Z equals 10 or 7 Anyway, the way this will move is it'll arc up and land at the other. So once my timer has reached a different time, let's go 5 seconds to 5.4 seconds. We're going to find block 2 and set its position to, uh, let's see, let's go negative 13, negative 2, negative 13, negative 2, and 7. And then I want it to move with a new vector 2, and having it move right at some velocity, let's say 7, have it move upward at a different velocity. Let's go 5. Actually move this to 10. Now if I were to click play, uh, we should see it jumping up after the blue guy. There we are. I do want to increase the y velocity. Let's make this one 10. And let's make this one Actually, I want it to arc higher than it goes to the right. Now, if I were to play it again, and this is basically what we're doing. We're timing when we want each thing to do what, and then we're just making it move. And it's a really simple thing to do. Like, if we want it to move from the cloud, we're just going to position it behind the cloud and 
we don't even have to set its velocity to anything because we can just let gravity do the work. So we can create our game just by modifying these different events and just adding a new block to the scene and having it do something when we want it to. And now here's the thing about randomness. For each object, we want it to have a random upward velocity or a random position and velocity depending on what kind of block it is. Like if it was one that jumps out of the grass, we want its velocity to probably go just under the tallest, under the cloud, and not go any further right than this part of the tree, and not go any further left than this part of the mountain. And the way we do that is by having a random velocity value, which is accessed by doing mathf.random, oh wait, random.range. And I want to set this between negative 6 and, oh wait, I want to do this in my vector values. And, okay, so here, random.range, And I want to travel between, let's go uh, 11 and 16. I'll save it and test it. So I'll head into my game view and just pay close attention to the highest point the block reaches. So first it was just a bit above the cloud. Second, it goes a little further below the cloud, and third, goes way below the cloud. And it's a very similar thing when you're doing your position vectors. You can just switch out a random dot range for your coordinates, and for here, I want it to go between negative Five and two. By doing that, there's just a bit less predictability with the positions and how they're going to move. So first it was in the center. Second, a little more to the right. And third time, also in the center. Should be going, well, I can increase this to negative 9, really. So by doing that, I can make it seem a bit more random and just have a less predictability. That would just make it more amusing because you don't always know when each block is going to come out. So, off-camera, I'm going to just keep building off this. I believe you have enough knowledge on how to get each object to do what you want. It's really just modifying their transforms and their velocities. And we're really close to having our game finished. All that's left is finalizing these events, you know, having a bit more stuff going on with these blocks, and then adding some sound effects, perhaps a score system, and a start menu, and then publishing. Those will be the topics for the next few videos. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.